Welcome to my most painful video so far, which is going to showcase mounting a porcupine. Now, a lot of people don't even realize that it's possible to mount a porcupine, but it is. You just have to uh, treat them with a little bit of extra care so that you don't get impaled by the quills too badly or lose too many quills on your work table. That's not to say that I don't get impaled by them. It absolutely happens, and it's, it's painful, but you can pull the quills out and move on. Uh, what we're going to be avoiding is just massive loss of quills by the handful. So right here, I'm just installing the little hollow bubble eyes. These black bubble eyes work great for small critters that have a really dark eye. I use them on raccoons and squirrels and beavers and porcupines. I'm putting some critter clay around the eyes now to give the expression of the eyes. Even porcupines have an expression. If it looks like I'm running my mouth, I'm always running my mouth, but not usually in a video, but today I was talking to my friend while I worked. I prefer to sometimes film videos and then do a voiceover later. Now I'm putting some clay onto the nose. You will see in the finished product, porcupines have kind of a, a really plumpy, expressive nose. So I put a lot of clay under there. And also some clay for the whisker pads and the bottom lip. There we go. All right, are we ready to have a good time? It's always a good time when you're handling a porcupine, right? What could possibly go wrong? Now I'm gonna put some hide paste. This will help to glue the hide down to the foam mannequin. This is called McKenzie hide paste. Pro One paste is also another great hide paste for taxidermy. And here is the porcupine hide. You can see his quills. And I'm just gonna slip him over the form. I will say this is a great position and pose for a porcupine because mounting a full body porky is just a whole nother ordeal. It's definitely more challenging. So in this case, the client chose a sort of a wall pedestal pose. And uh, this eliminated having to mess with the feet and the rest of the body while it's still showing off the porcupine quite well. You see how I'm able to handle it very gently. When I pull on it, I kind of pull it from the underside. So I'm grabbing onto the leather, but not the quills on the top side. This helps a lot. He's got all this spiky hair on the top that's soft. Now I'm just going to adjust the mouth here. Tuck the upper lip and then the bottom lip just like you would any other animal. Sorry, my head is in the way. Sometimes I can't always see the, uh, the video angles that I'm shooting. We do what we can do. And tuck his wee little bottom lip. And all that clay I put in there is gonna help with uh, adjusting the expression once I get it mounted. Another nice thing about the pedestal is that, you know, I'm able to attach it to my mounting stand and not have to figure out how to hold this whole porcupine. All right, we are about done with the lips here.
Now time to tuck his little beady black eyes. I've got this little very thin tucking tool and I'll tuck that eyelid skin in between the glass eye and the clay. If you are a taxidermist, then um, this is just like any other animal. That was the easy part. Now I've got some excess hide. I always cut my hides extra long, way more than I'll need. So I'm gonna trim those quills off give him more of his pedestal shape. Multiple times I yelled ow during this part. I was definitely getting jabbed a few times here. Now it's time to groom the porcupine. I'm going to get my master blaster blower here in just a minute and kind of fluff his quills up. A porcupine's quills naturally kind of stand on end. We don't want them completely laying flat. So here we are going to go with the air blower and kind of dry this off a little bit. Again, you might think that this blower would just send those quills flying, but um, if you do it kind of gently, it's actually not that bad. See how they just separate. I dislodged a couple quills as I went along. You can see me pulling those out. Those were ones that were already loose and ready to fall out. So I'll just pull those out and then groom his little hairs on top of his head. Those hairs that stick straight up beyond the quills are really soft. And they like to stand straight up. And now I'm just adding some things to the scene. I like to put a little bit of artificial pine tree with uh, porcupine scenes. I think it makes a nice contrast. So I drilled some holes and I'm just putting in some artificial pine. And you'll see that in the finished mount. A little bit up under here. And I might take a little moss as well and kind of blend that in. And there you have it porcupine pedestal. Now I'd say if you have a client wanting a porcupine and they're on the fence about spending the money on a full body mount, you can push them in the direction of something like this because this shows off the porcupine really well. In the background of this scene, you see a full body porcupine. He is also handsome looking, but a lot more work. I really like the way this porcupine pedestal came out. I hope you enjoyed watching the video, and I am going to go uh, get a box of Band-Aids, if you don't mind. Thanks for watching.